back to our channel. I'm Rachel. I'm Nikki. And we are the, the Sip Sisters. Sisters. <laughs> Today's video is all about our top 10 tips for sewing with pleather. Sometimes known as faux leather or mm -hmm. leatherette. It's fake leather basically. Yeah. Um, often made of vinyl. And we are going to give you all of the information and tips and tools that you need mm. to sew with it flawlessly. But before we go any further, we want to make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the little notifications bell and send us a little thumbs up if you like our videos. We'd love to hear from you. So, without further ado, <gasps> let's, do let's it. crack on. Okay. So, yeah. so, what is pleather, you might say? Shall I get a little sample and show everyone? That would be so great. I'll show you what it looks like. So, you can see that it comes in, uh, it's got the pleather on the front. And then on the back, it's got uh, a little um, fabric coating on the back. What I would say is that it might be useful for you if you've never used it before. If you're not buying it in person, get a little sample swatch before you do anything. Because it's always useful to see the colour and how stretchy it is and how thick it is and things like that. So that will be very useful as well. Yes. Uh, things you might use it for include bags, yes. uh, reupholstering things. So a lot of people mm. actually sell it as upholstery fabric for things like camper vans and car yeah. interiors and stuff. Um, but it's great for bags, it's good for cushions, especially mm -hmm. outdoor or wipe clean type things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, you should, if you haven't used it yet, yeah, you should definitely for, try some. Um, for dressmaking as well, I made, I made a full leather skirt. It you wasn't did. in that heavy stuff. No, it was, it was a, a thin, nice thin, vegan leather. Um, and and child, that's a much yes. drapier. Yes. So if you're that's definitely so if, if you're looking for homewares, if you're looking for bags, uh, or even if you're looking for just making, definitely get a sample because they're a whole different ball game when it comes to one or the other. So one's really boxy and firm, and the other one's really yeah. draping. So that was just on a side point. Well, what we'll do. So these are our top ten tips for sewing with pleather. Yes. So number one. Uh, the first thing is your foot. You will need a different foot to mm -hmm. sew successfully with pleather. Pleather can have a very sticky surface. Not all of them do, but lots of them have quite a sticky surface and it tends to get stuck to the bottom of your presser foot. It so does. there are two other feet that you could possibly use instead. Mm -hmm. The first one I'm going to show you is this one here. This is a Teflon foot. Let's try and get it to focus there you go you can see that it's white and it is made of teflon which mm. is the stuff that they use to coat your frying pan <laughs> so it's not metal that's it's not it metal is. that's the difference it's, it's made of plastic. plastic yes but the idea is is that because it's teflon it won't have as much traction when it goes mm. over the pleather so it won't grip to it and stick mm -hmm. to it it should slide over it doesn't always work, but no. it does for most of them. Yeah. For the really tricky ones that don't respond to the Teflon foot, you could also try this one here. This is called a roller foot. Now, often <laughs> these come with, here we go, let me show you the base. See, there's that little roller ball in it. Um, often these are not clip-on feet, they're not uh, snap-on presser feet. It actually comes with its own shank. So wow. you will actually need to take the shank off of your machine and um, and to uh, add this one on instead. But the good thing about feet that come with a shank is that they are very, very stable. And the idea with this one is that it will just roll. It's like a little mini roller skate. Look. It's making a lovely Ooh. little squeaking noise as well. <laughs> like old toys that used to put along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that will roll over the fabric. Yep. Personally, I have found that when the Teflon foot is not cutting it, the roller foot usually does. Mm -hmm. There is another option for oh, it, that? where you don't have to buy a foot at all yes um a little tip a it's called option. magic tape and the reason it's called magic tape is because it has so many uses this is scotch magic tape so it's scotch tape i'll just pull a bit off so that you can recognize it's that kind of opaque um slightly opaque uh, it's not overly tape. sticky, is it, sometimes? It's it? not, but it does have a really, really, really smooth surface. So mm -hmm. if you put that on the bottom of your normal presser foot, your yep. universal presser foot, and you actually cut the little hole to allow your needle to, to go, go through right. and everything, mm -hmm. then you may well be able to get away with that mm -hmm. and not changing your foot at mm. all. So that is our number one. So number two on our top 10 is needles. So you will definitely need to change your needle, okay? And I know a lot of people, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not naming names, but uh, not me, I probably you. <laughs> a lot of people can't even remember the last time that they changed their needle. Yeah. We have had ladies come to class who, when we say to them, when was the last time you changed your needle, they say, 
Uh, I don't think I ever have, and they've had their sewing machine three, four years. <laughs> That's not good. You no, need to change not your needle. Acceptable. Change but your needle. Change your needle. If you're sewing with cotton all the time, you can probably get away with it. But sewing something as as difficult as pleather, you definitely need to change your needle. So ideally, if you can get some, what you want is a pleather or leather needle. There we go. Let's see if we can focus. There we are. So these are leather needles. They all, you, you, different manufacturers will make different ones. These come from a size 12, which is an 80, up to a 16, which is a 100. And did you say there was an ideal size? Well, ideally for leather, for pleather, um, you would want to use a 16. Mm -hmm. um, but it depends on the weight. So like right. we were saying, if it's a heavyweight upholstery, use mm -hmm. a 16. If it's a very lightweight sort of drapery or dressmaking, pleather, you could get away with a 12 or 14. Yeah. Alternatively, if you don't have any pleather needles and there's just no way you can wait to get some, then you could use some denim needles because these are obviously made for heavyweight um, structured fabrics again and they come in a similar um, size so these ones are 14s but you can obviously get jeans needles where they come as a variety of different sizes as well so look for the heaviest you can get a 14 or a 16 and either a jeans or a denim needle don't use your standard universal needle because your stitches just won't come up to par no and make sure it's a new needle as well yes. a new needle for each pleather project because yes they dull really really quickly so mm. even if you think i've already got a leather needle mm. in you still change it if you want to get the best possible yeah. stitches and then take it out afterwards <laughs> don't then go and sew a lovely silk dress uh, with your your dulled leather needle that won't be really good <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, right, number three. so number three on our top 10 tips for sewing with pleather is to test. So before you sew any kind of pleather, it doesn't matter if you've sewn it before, you need to make sure that this particular fabric that you're using has been tested, that you found the ideal settings and the ideal stitches. So cut yourself some little scraps and have a play. You might want to play around with stitch lengths and you might want to play around feet. with tension. You yep. might want to change different feet and different uh, uh, needles as we've already discussed mm -hmm. to get the best possible stitches. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not gonna know what you're letting yourself in for until you've actually tested it out. Absolutely. So make sure you test each new pleather um, before you start sewing your actual thing. Mm. And that's a really good tip. Yeah. So number four. Number four is check and double check mm -hmm. before you make any moves on it. So what you want to do is you don't want to be unpicking. That's, that's what we want no. to be avoiding. Because any holes punctured in your pleather will be there for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> that's Can't get it. rid of them. Can't press them out. You could make your items smaller by cutting them out, but you need to be really sure. Double check everything is tucked away. Double check you've got the right sides together. Double check it's the right seam that you're sewing, and then you can go ahead and sew. Yes, that's a really, really good tip there because there's no do-overs when no. it comes to pleather. No, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, that also brings us on to tip number five, Hi. which is not to use pins. You no. don't want to use pins for the same reason. It will leave holes and you mm -hmm. won't be able to get rid of them. So what we like to use instead are these binding clips. I'll get one out so that you can see. So they're these little plastic clips and they just clamp your edge together. We use these to clamp along the edge of your mm -hmm. seam, um, joining your two layers together. And yeah. that will mean that they won't shift, but you don't have to worry about making holes. Yes. Um, another couple of tips that I've seen that you're welcome to try is the same tape, your scotch tape. You could actually wrap that around the edge on both layers um, yep. as long as where you're stitching is further in um, so that you're not actually going to be stitching through the tape. Yes. Um, and I've even seen people recommend Pritt stick, but I've not tried that, mm. so that might be a crazy idea. Nikki thinks I'm mental. I think Pritt stick and fabric is just mental. Apparently, Apparently lots of people swear by it, so I'm try it and let us know. We would love to know if you've tried it. It sounds scary to me. Yes, what's but number six? Number six is one layer at a time. So this is to do with cutting. Uh -huh. So you don't want to be folding and, and cutting things on the fold or anything like that. You want to concentrate on one layer at a time. Because you can imagine if you're using a big heavy pleather just like the one that we showed you you're not going to be able to get that flat you're not going to be able to get a good 
clean edge so you want to cut your pieces one at a time yeah now you can mark on the back of the pleather it's mm -hmm. very easy to draw either with chalk or on, with pencil on yeah. the back and if you've got a really good pair of sharp scissors then use them but we are much prefer a rotary cutter so a rotary cutter and a self-healing board this is a rotary cutter yes it's not the same one it's my it favorite thing in the world pop-up blade yes and you run it around your pattern piece. and put a, put a clean blade in that's the other thing because you'll get a much cleaner cut a much mm -hmm. finer cut yeah with a clean blade okay so number seven um is to use a longer stitch length yes so what tends to happen is even if you're using a teflon foot a roller foot scotch tape on the bottom of your mm -hmm. foot if you've adjusted the tension um it will sometimes still stick a little bit yeah so if you were on say a four in terms of stitch length your mm -hmm. stitches would end up like a two or even a one and a half yeah. on some pleathers because as it's sticking it's not able to get that even movement through the machine so mm -hmm. it's getting little pinchy stitches instead of long even ones so our tip is to crank it right up and Start again do this in the testing stage yep. so that you can see what it looks like first um, but often I'll just crank it straight up to a five which is the longest stitch length on my machine mm -hmm. and usually it's then comparable to about a two and a half or a three yep. um, on a normal fabric um, the other thing to mention whilst we're talking about stitch length is to try and maintain an even speed oh, so whether you've got speed control on your machine or whether you're doing it with the pedal need to try and keep it even mm. if you're really speeding up and then slowing down um the feed dogs are not able to work in the way they normally do they can't take the fabric through quite as evenly as it will mm. do so it's relying on you to maintain that speed and that will yeah. give you much more even stitches it's those changes those quick changes in speed which yeah. cause problems with the i mean stitches. try it out when you're testing try putting yeah. your foot to the floor and then suddenly slowing down and what mm. you'll probably find is that you've got a long stitches little pinchy stitches long stitches yeah. little pinchy stitches <laughs> so you know try and maintain that speed yeah. and and it will give you much better results yeah absolutely the other thing we did was we used a triple stitch as well so you excuse can... the dog the postman's just dropped oh, something through the letterbox so she's having a little bark but that's <laughs> well, well in her bed yes so she's she can't be able to get out of bed she just wants to bark <laughs> too like, like she's royalty <laughs> So just, just triple stitch. We uh, so if you're having real problems with um, with your stitches, what you can do is move to a triple stitch if you have it on your machine because that gives you a much better top stitch as well. So well, what it does is it kind of creates the illusion of top stitching. It's yeah. like a faux top stitch. So it does a back stitch the whole way along, um, and not only is that really strong, but it gives you a much thicker line that makes it look like you've used top stitching thread yeah. without having use it <laughs> so the what, what number are we on number eight. Me, number eight so we're talking about now is sewing on the underside of the fabric whenever you can so obviously your ideal situation is that you sew your entire thing right sides together so you've got pleather against pleather and you're just sewing on the soft cushion side on either side of the fabric but that isn't always possible but whenever it is possible always sew on the underside of the fabric but what it also means is that when you're top stitching normally you would top stitch on the right side of the fabric mm -hmm. but if you're having trouble getting even stitches doing that then that's when you would stitch it from the underside yeah the feed dogs are not going to have the same problem with the fabric sticking to it as the underside of the presser foot will have mm -hmm. so by sewing from the underside you are going to get more uh, consistent stitching however very important note here is that lots of machines do not have stitches that look as nice on the underside as they do on the top yeah so see what yours looks like first and you may need to play around with the bobbin tension to try yeah. and get your stitches looking as nice on the bottom as they do on the top before you mm. start top stitching on the reverse okay great so number nine um this is a really really good one if you've got a pleather that's stretching slightly make sure you always stitch in the same direction mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is if you imagine you're making a bag handle you've got a big long length to sew and you've top stitched it down one side in one direction when you top stitch the other side start at the same point and work to the same ends now the reason you do this is because as it stretches it might twist slightly yeah if it, you sew one way and it twists by sewing the other end it's going to twist at least in the same direction and that will look more flat yeah. if you were to sew from the other side you'd get a twist coming the opposite way and it would just be all buckled and it yeah. would not sit flat it won't sit, yeah so even if that means that you have to sew one edge on the right side of the fabric and one edge on the underside to allow you to be able to sew them in the same direction that mm -hmm. is better to do than to be coming in different directions mm. great 
So what's the last one? The last one is about pressing. Now, you would think that you can't press pleather, mm -hmm. but you can yes. if you're careful, yeah. okay? So what I'd say, first of all, is if you if you fabric arrives and it has uh, crumples in it or folds in it, what you can do is just lay it out and let it rest, and it will, it's Especially most of those, in the sun. In the sun, or in, in a warm place on top of your, your airing cupboard, something like that, and it, they will drop out a little bit, okay? If uh, you need to do a bit more direct action, you can use a hairdryer gently on it, which will warm the fabric and take the creases out. But with regard to pressing as you're making your item, you can put your iron on a synthetic setting, you can make sure it's dry, so no, no steam. steam, no steam at all, and obviously test first <laughs> okay uh, use a press cloth or an old tea towel or something like that to protect the leather as well but and be very careful just take it a little bit at a time so if you want to get a really crisp even hem around the top of the bag then you can press it but be aware that you, you might it might just take a little bit more time and you have to be a bit gentle with it mm -hmm. but you can be done yes so there you go, there's our top 10 tips. Now we have got a couple of extra little oh, nuggets. They don't deserve the extra oh, ones. Of course they do. If they've stuck with <laughs> us till now, they deserve the extra nuggets. There are a couple of little things that you can do that will also help, but not everyone has access to these, which is why we've got them as extras. Yeah. One of them is to use a walking foot. A walking foot is effectively a presser foot that also has its own set of feed dogs. Yeah. So it means that the fabric is clamped between two sets of feed dogs, which controls how it's moved through. That can help with sticking, it can help with more even stitches, so mm. if you've got one, definitely use it on pleather. It's a great thing for all dressmakers actually, because it move lots of knits and things like yeah. that much better with a walking yes. foot. So although it's seen as a quilter's tool, it can still be used in general day to day Absolutely. for all sorts. All tricky fabrics yeah. can benefit from a walking foot. Uh, the other thing will all depend on your machine. So yeah. some machines come with pressure foot. No. So hard to say. Presser, presser foot, foot pressure. pressure. <laughs> You have to say it slow. You can't say it fast. No, it's like a tongue twister. <laughs> so if your if your foot come if your machine comes with it, then you can adjust it. If it does, it will look like a big it. screw, which is located on the top left of your machine, so mm. somewhere close to where the take up lever comes up, and it uh, just looks uh, like a big yeah. dial or a screw. Yeah. Um, by loosening the presser foot pressure yes you can help it move through better you're, you're stopping it from clamping quite so much so if you're releasing some of the pressure it's not get it's not having a chance to get stuck quite yes. as much and as always with tension the higher the number the more tension the lower number the less tension which yep. is why you're turning it down to yep. loosen the tension yes the final thing is if you really are struggling with a pleather that is stretchy some of them are quite stretchy even ones that you weren't expecting to be stretchy yes. um you can always use some strips of interfacing as well even if it's just in the seam area you could fuse mm -hmm. on some say one inch or half inch strips of interfacing right yeah. on the edge again using the iron and the settings that we've already talked about um, and fuse that onto the back before you stitch it together and that will stop it from stretching as you sew yes I that's think it. that's everything we can possibly tell you. Yes. I'm sure there's more. And if you know any tips for sewing with pleather Ooh. that you'd like to tell us, sure we that. would love to hear. So please yes. do comment below. But don't let these tricky fabrics put you off. There's lots and lots of projects you can, you can do. And we're going to help guide you through with some top tens and some useful tips for all those tricky fabrics. All the tricky fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.